The year was 1877 in Granbury, Texas. Finis L. Bates, the grandfather of legendary actress Kathy Bates, was called to the bedside of his friend, John St. Helen, who had found himself in poor health. John St. Helen had asked to speak to Finis L. Bates alone. The conversation that followed was one that nobody seen coming. As John St. Helen laid there dying, he said there to his friend, I am dying. My name is John Wilkes Booth and I am the assassin of President Lincoln. Despite his waning health and apparent onset of death, St. Helen lived to see another day, and then many more after that. The plot continued to thicken. The accounts that Bates kept of the conversations with St. Helen spoke of how he had claimed that Vice President Andrew Johnson was the puppeteer behind the assassination plot, that he had gifted St. Helen a password that allowed him to escape the manhunt that pursued the assassin. John Wilkes Booth. St. Helen told the story of how some other poor soul had been murdered in the tobacco barn of Richard Garrett in 1965. The reason for this was to allow the pursuing posse to still claim the bounty on the heads of John Wilkes Booth. He then went on to state that an innocent man lay dead in the Booth family plot, which allowed him to drift across the country, Wild West, a vagabond with many different names. After this, St. Helen skipped his town alive and kicking. Sometime later in life, Finis L. Bates read a story in a newspaper in Memphis, a story that would resurface a story he had heard once before. In January 1903, a man named David E. George had locked himself in a hotel room in Oklahoma and ingested a lethal dose of arsenic, laying himself to rest. The wife of a Methodist minister had told the newspaper that George had failed to commit suicide nine months before. But while believing he was dying, he had confessed, I am not David George. I am the man who killed the best man that ever lived. I am J. Wilkes Booth. A newspaper ran side by side illustrations of the two men, and it was clear to all there was a striking resemblance. Finis L. Bates seen the man in the newspaper, and he recognised him. The man was John St. Helen. On a mission, Bates tracked down the body to Penniman's Mortuary and Furniture Store in Enid, Oklahoma. He tried to gain custody of the unclaimed body, but unfortunately for him, it had become a local tourist attraction. Dressed up in a suit and bow and tie, you could find people flocking to see the body of Lincoln's apparent assassin, sat in the chair at the front of Penniman's parlour, with glass eyes and a newspaper on his lap. In a lucky happenstance, not so much for David E. George of course, the arsenic used to embalm the body and the arsenic he had swallowed had caused the body to become a well-preserved mummy. In the year of 1907, Bates published The Escape and Suicide of John Wilkes Booth, written for the correction of history. A book that sought to detail St. Helen's account of how he escaped the manhunt. Finis L. Bates gained custody of the body and started to rent it out to carnivals, state fairs and midways. The body that claimed to be the body of John Wilkes Booth set out on a freak show circuit of the states. The post life of John Wilkes Booth was one that brought chaos as it travelled. Nearly every showman who acquired the body for a certain period of time had found themselves in financial turmoil. In 1920, a circus train with the mummy on board wrecked on the way to San Diego, ending the lives of eight people. After this, the body was kidnapped and held for ransom. The reason for this? The desire to kill John Wilkes Booth twice. The body continued a long and consistently mediocre career as a travelling star before its last public appearance in 1970. These days it might simply be resting in the hands of a private collector, interested in the morbid. There's claims family members have supported the idea of exhuming the body buried in Booth's grave for DNA testing to finally find out the truth of the matter, but courts have so far denied the request. So maybe we will never know if Finis L. Bates on that day had heard the truth from John St. Helen or David E. George or maybe, just maybe, John Wilkes Booth. <laughs>